What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is your weekly new comic book day show. That's right. We're talking about those first appearances, talking about the reader buzz and variant buzz. We are talking about the Bolo list on the Bolo show. Jack, how's your new comic book day? It's a good new comic book day. Um, wasn't necessarily my favorite, but there's going to be some good long-term sleepers in this week. Yeah, I don't want to say there's like some big books that came out, but there was books yeah. that had a lot of covers and some monumental issues with, we had a new number one. We also had a pretty big DC monumental issue, but we're going to get into it right now, starting with the first appearances. The first book we're talking about, and the only book we're talking about this week for first appearances is that Vampirella Trial of the Souls number one, where we got a priest, right? Yeah, yeah, like an agent of heaven um, who kind of uh, wields a sword. Now, here's the thing. Um, this is a Vampirella first appearance. This is a light week on first appearance. We definitely had to include this. It was a confirmed one. Uh, Key Collector had put this one out in advance of um, release day. Um, so this is one of those ones where this was part of, like, the marketing for this book. So definitely um, a character worth knowing. But I don't know. I don't know, Brian. We're both Vampirella fans. But I don't know if really first appearances in the Vampirella universe are the type of thing that are going to move the needle. Either way, um, this is a long anticipated miniseries that has been postponed for a while um, and is finally hitting, hitting shelves. Well, yeah. And if Key Collector puts it up, it's not like you're not going to get it because you know everyone else is. And just like that, we wrap up the first appearance section. So we're going to move now into the reader buzz. And getting into the reader buzz, the first one we're talking about this week is Justice League number 53. This is also a tie-in, right? That's right. And I tell you what, Brian, I'm starting to see a trend going on in the hobby right now. Tie-in titles are kind of hot. I think that could be a three-up trend. Now, I don't necessarily mean that they're hot as in uh, they're going to be booming up at the secondary market. Um, they may go over cover. You may see some 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 returns, but you're not going to see huge returns. But these are solid reader buzz books. This is a Dark Knight's death metal uh, tie-in. So, you know, people who are already invested in the death metal story, they're going to pick this up, even if they're not regular Justice League readers. And what that ends up doing is that ends up adding to the amount of people who are picking up a book over the typical readership that you talk about your pull list, your pre-order customers. Um, and since there isn't like a first appearance or some flashy variant cover that is pulling everybody towards this issue, this is really reader buzz. This is people grabbing it because they're invested in that, that mini series story. Yeah. I, I would go even a step further. Like we've talked about tie-ins a bunch of times on this channel. If it's DC, I tend to buy more of the tie-ins than Marvel just because Marvel has, I don't know if you'd say a lot more tie-ins, but DC, especially with Joker War, especially with the, uh, Death Metal. And I get enthralled in those stories where I want to get the tie-ins at that time. A lot of the other ones, I might hold off on the tie-ins. We've talked about it before. Where I'll pick it up in either trade or the whole collected hardcover omnibus or whatsoever. But yeah, tie-ins, they're not quite that additional printing hot, but they're definitely gotten some, they're definitely picking up. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of what you're saying about DC versus uh, Marvel, it, it really reigns true in the fact that, like, we've seen important things happen in tie-ins. It seems sometimes, like, the tie-ins in the Marvel stories come off almost as just, like, filler extras. Uh, it's almost allowing others to play. We'll see if King and Black kind of bucks that trend, because that's one I'm definitely anticipating, and uh, I, so much so I'll probably be paying attention to the tie-ins there. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the trends because all it takes is to introduce a new character and a tie-in. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, everyone's picking up every other tie-in because they don't want to be left out or have that FOMO again. But the next one I want to talk about is that You Look Like Death, that Umbrella Academy book, the issue number one. Yeah, I think this one snuck by people, Brian. I think not having Umbrella Academy like front and center in the title um, allowed this one to kind of go under the radar. So this is kind of a seance solo story uh, within the Umbrella Academy franchise. And this book was sold out at major retailers like my comic shop in Midtown. Uh, so and then, with Dark Horse, there tends to be some ability to reorder and sometimes get books back in stock. But it just shows that there was, there was serious interest in this book and the supply, at least initially, was not able to keep up with the demand. Yeah, the next one is we're getting back over to Vault with the Indie Comics. We're talking about Heavy Number One. This had that Punisher-type feel to it. 
I've picked this up, haven't had a chance to read it yet. So I'd definitely like to know from you, the viewer, what if you guys picked this up and read it, what did you think of it? But Jack, tell us more about it. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. So I've picked this one up, haven't read it yet. Uh, this was one I was very excited for. Uh, I'm a Punisher fan, so you immediately get that vibe. I like the concept of the book, right, where you go to heaven and you're kind of assigned a job. Um, and those jobs can be very wide ranging. So the character here uh, has a uh, uh, kind of a violent job. And so it allows, um, in the name heavy, he's kind of the heavy of the story. So it allows you... Um, and it's kind of a cool take on it. So it's very interesting. And it's different from Vault. Vault, we kind of associate with these like horror supernatural stories. And while there is a supernatural element, because we're talking about the afterlife, uh, you know, certainly when you start evoking the Punisher and kind of street level justice, you start thinking um, in different terms of Vault. But I think Vault, we talked about this uh, uh, a couple months ago, that they were kind of like off their, their, their course. They had gotten really hot. Uh, and, and it's really any publishers, when you get hot, you got to really strike. And the Wassel brothers, they did a really great job kind of capitalizing on initial success with the vault vintage program. Um, that, and they kind of saw that success start to kind of wane as a lot of publishers did. We talked about this too, like with COVID, indie publishers are probably the most affected. Um, and coming out of that, getting that momentum back has been nice to see because Walt is definitely gaining momentum with each release. So let us know, like Brian said in the comment section, if you read Heavy, what did you think? Were you excited about this one as much as we were? And it, what other Vault recent titles are you reading or which ones are you looking forward to? Yeah, I definitely think this could be the book. I won't say that puts Vault back on the map, but we haven't talked about his Vault as much as we have in the past. And I think this one could t turn that around. But the next one I want to talk about, we're getting back over to DC. We talked about Justice League. Here we're talking about that big monumental DC issue when we got Detective Comics number 1027. Right. This is reader buzz, but really this is variant buzz because this is all about those awesome covers that you get with all of these monumental DC issues. Now, if you're new to the channel, and we definitely want to say welcome to our new subscribers. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. We've got weekly content going all week, every week. Um, bringing you everything from new comic books to back issues, uh, making sure you're set up for pre-orders for FOC. But one of the things that we have kind of, uh, kind of consistently, consistently talked about was how much we like these really monumental issues. And that's what you're getting right here with Detective Comics 1027. Um, now, yeah, we just talked about this with Detective Comics 1000, which, of course, is the thousandth issue of Detective Comics. But this is important because Batman wasn't introduced to the 27th issue of Detective Comics. So now we get that Batman monumental anniversary. And you're getting that depicted with all of these great covers. These books are just fun. You get a bunch of writers, a bunch of artists. A bunch of great writers. Right, right. A-list type. Um, and you get a bunch of, of the best cover artists you could ever imagine. And then the stores that do retailer exclusive variants for these books, they always go out and get the biggest and the best and, and do some of the most creative cover art designs. We definitely want to shout out our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, who had an amazing Peach Romoco variant. And the blank. And, yeah, and, and an incredible blank cover with that kind of like vintage paper look. So... Um, shout out to Kevin and his team over at Frankie's Comics, constantly innovating. But um, yeah, so I, I really love these books. We love these books. We know that the speculative market, the secondary market, they don't get behind uh, these books as much. Um, they are looked at as gimmicky. And they are, but honestly, they are in the best way, in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, if you're a Batman fan, it's a great book to have in your collection, a fan of Detective. And speaking of Batman, the next book on that Reader Buzz list is that Batman number 99 issue that I freaking love that variant for this. Yeah, Derek Chu, um, that Clown Hunter variant. I think Clown Hunter, to me, has a lot of potential, depending on where they go with the character, because the initial buzz, it, it's characters hit. Anything related to Joker seems to hit, and this being kind of a character who could give Joker some trouble. And uh, Derek Chu really killed it with this variant, showing kind of like the action and emotion on that cover. Uh, definitely Art Germesque. But moving over to Marvel, and with that big Donny Kate storyline, we get Thor number seven. Yeah, Thor. We're going to talk about Thor probably. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're like Yukon Cornelius over there. Yeah, right? Fumbles bounce. <laughs> but yeah, we're probably going to be talking about Donny Cates' Thor run each and every time an issue drops. But this was no different. Excellent addition to the story. But the buzz has actually been about kind of an Easter egg within the story. The fact that the God Country sword was present front and center uh, in the within the pages of Thor 7. That's what really has the internet buzzing today. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it plenty of times on here. I've, I've really been happy with Donny Cates' run. I'm really excited about it. Um, I was really, I won't say skeptical, but I was always, I was a big Jason Aaron homer on that run, but definitely been enjoying this story. And if you guys aren't reading it, which I don't know many people that aren't, because the buzz is super strong, but it's been fantastic. And if, if you haven't been a Thor fan, I think you might be if you start with this run. But the next one we want to talk about sticking with Marvel we're getting into X-Men with X-Men number 12. Yeah, a lot of people talking about this, getting ready for the upcoming uh, big X uh, kind of crossover series. Um, a lot of talk about, uh, uh, you know, what is going to kind of come into this and how, who, how who's going to be involved, how is it going to all play out. Uh, and we're starting to get to the point that some of these prelude stories, we talked about kind of tie-ins. Um, but some of these prelude stories are starting to get extra attention as people are kind of uh, valuing them more, um, kind of trying to see what we can kind of pull from them. So X-Men number 12 saw some solid, solid late buzz uh, coming into the kind of like right before new comic book day as people kind of got excited. And there's also several stores doing exclusive variants for it, which, you know, always kind of increases the awareness of an issue. I don't necessarily know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it will definitely get the awareness of an issue out there. Yeah, this one would have been a great one for store exclusives because it just had the one cover, right? Right, right. So. Next one we're talking about, this one maybe could have been added to the first appearance list, but it's Star Wars 6. And we get what, that first appearance of the yellow lightsaber? Yes, this is going to get debated. Um, I've, uh, I've seen people bring up um, other imaging and covers. Um, this has been advertised as the first appearance of Luke's yellow lightsaber. Um, and it's on the cover of cover A. It's on the cover of the John Christopher Tyler um, uh, action figure variant. I really like this because Star Wars stuff is really hot. Uh, at the same point, I think that some of the market negativity initially does tend to hurt books um, in the short term, so you may not get like the initial pop for this book that we talked about at FOC, the potential was there for. Um, but long term, Star Wars stuff is just red hot. Look at the Mandalorian trailer and how everybody's going nuts trying to figure out who Sasha Banks is playing. The boss. <laughs> but sticking with Marvel, still we got that big Iron Man number one re release, and this is another one that had a bunch of covers. Um, I think I like the Alex Ross Timeless variant. And this is another one I picked up, haven't had a chance to read yet, so I'm excited to see how Cantwell does with this. Um, yeah, so I like Christopher Cantwell. Um, but if I'm in a full confession, I don't know whether or not there was really enough buzz for this book to be on this list. Or if I just couldn't bring myself to not put an Iron Man number one on the list. Because the reality is, I mean, almost nobody's talking about this. Uh, I'm, what was funny, you know, we run a variant program. We talked about when Iron Man number one got brought up as a possibility of a project, one of the first things we said is, well, this isn't one we wouldn't want to do because everybody does Iron Man, right? And there really isn't a bunch of Iron Man variants out there. Um, there's a ton for the book. Um, but, and I think that's the point is that we've all become desensitized to it. They've rebooted the series so many times. There have been and Iron Man issues and arcs that have gotten people's attention, certainly the you know creation of Rescue and everything Matt Fraction was doing on that run with Adi Granoff doing covers, um, certainly you know the Arno Stark uh, stuff that went on later on with the Marvel Now, you know they've had they've had recent attention, but uh, it's been a while and rebooting the series just really hasn't shown. Um, to do it and they've also tried to do some things like superior iron man and you know uh, it, they've tried to do these different kind of takes and um 
put Tony Stark in these different situations where kind of hopefully uh, you'll get something new and fresh. Hasn't really worked. So we'll see. I'm hopeful with this new this new series. Obviously, this is a beloved character who you're not going to fully see on the big screen. I say fully because you just never know. But, you know, obviously, we all know what happened in the Endgame. So it, the great thing about superheroes, Brian, is they live forever in the pages of the comics. So the last one we're talking about in the reader list is that hero trade number one. This comes from that new publisher, Bad Idea, which we've talked about on this channel before. We actually have a whole video highlighting Bad Idea and their business practice. But this is that first release from them, right? Yes. And I got to tell you, Brian, you and I, we, we like to consider ourselves comic market rebels, right? We're, we're a little bit of market disruptors. That's, that's what we like to do. Um, I love what the team did with this release. So a couple weeks ago, this book, one copy of this book, a black and white book, showed up at comic book stores with a very simple note saying that th this book was free to the store and that the store could put, they wanted the store to put it out for sale. And that if you wanted to order more, email a Gmail address. And it was literally just like the hero trade at Gmail. <laughs> and they were $3 a copy, shipping included, and they would get shipped to your store. Um, there was no information about the publisher, about the writer, any of that information. Um, so needless to say, a lot of stores looked at this black and white comic and thought it was, you know, some sort of solicitation. Um, well, it was from the Bad Idea team, uh, Adam Freeman, Dinesh Shambhasani. Um, this is a brand new book from Matt Kent who's obviously a, a big time writer. Uh, he's the writer of the upcoming, or uh, the co-writer of the upcoming Keanu Reeves series, Berserker for Boom Studios. Um, this would be, if people knew it was coming, a highly anticipated release. Uh, and the fact that they dropped it the way that they did, uh, stores only had until the 13th to get their orders into that Gmail address. So by the time that this kind of went wide and everybody figured it out, it was the 15th. And you were talking two days too late. So the, the, the supply of this book is not meeting the demand at all. Dinesh and the Bad Idea team were doing some work on Twitter today, trying to direct fans to stores that were saying that they had copies in stock, but stores were selling out. Um, this is the kind of promotion and buzz that Bad Idea, I think, was trying to do by being unique. And, and it's, it's right in the name, right? It's a bad idea not to say, hey, this is from the former people of, that ran Valiant Comics. And, you know, this is superstar writer Matt Kent. And, um, you know, this is the first offering of a brand new company. But to do it in secret like that, it's like they intentionally got less orders in order to create this shortage that they have and now the buzz that they're getting. It's, it's kind of cool. I, I like it. So um, let us know. I would love to know from you guys. I don't have a copy of this book. I would love to know if you guys went to your LCS. Um, I live in South Carolina. This is not necessarily the place where they are going to jump on this kind of a thing. So I would love to know if you guys went to your LCS, if they had a stock of the hero trade, if you were able to pick one up, um, I would, I would, I'm so curious as to this book's like general availability. That's going to bring us to the close of our reader buzz section. So now we're going to move over into the variant buzz. First book we're talking about in the variant buzz is probably one that a lot of people had on the radar. And we're talking about that deceased dead planet number one, Momoko, right? Yeah, a lot of people had it on their radar. I'm sure orders will be high for it, but we've seen what late printings have done, especially late printings with new cover art. Um, Poison Ivy is a cult popular character, one where I think there's a lot of room to grow. Momoko is the hottest artist in the game, and there were shortages. There were a lot of retailers reporting that they got shorted covers. Um, so as much as people ordered, it seems like the supply still didn't quite meet the demand. So this is one to keep an eye out for long term. Then we also have that giant size X-Men Storm number one. There's a Jim Bartel variant. Right, and we just talked about how everybody's kind of looking at these uh, X-Stasis previews. This was a big one. This, this was a big prelude to that. Um, a lot of people think that Storm is going to be at the forefront of that. And then furthermore, this Jen Bartel cover was getting a lot of attention making the rounds on social media. Um, 
you know, shout out to uh, Lucas Fashina of the Comic Crusaders, who I know I saw posted this book. Uh, and then I, afterwards, I saw several reposts. I don't know that it was necessarily his post that got that book attention, but he, that's the first place that I saw it. And then I started noticing it more and more. So people were definitely behind this cover. The next on the list, we have that Empire number four, the second print that came out for that. Right, and this was a, a key issue where you had the first uh, wedding between um, two superheroes, but or two gay superheroes. As but as Brian and I have mentioned before, you know, us old school comic fans were like, "Nah, man, the North Star issue. That's the that's the key one." But you know, they want to make a distinction because North Star was a gay superhero who married a civilian versus two gay superheroes. Either way, it's depicted right on the cover of the second printing. With all this news about uh, Young Avengers, I, these are two Young Avengers characters. Uh, I think certainly LGBTQ plus inclusion would be extremely important uh, in the future in the MCU. I think this is a solid long-term hold chance, to be honest with you. Yeah. Other than that, just for that, because Empire Story, like, a, like I figured would be, was kind of a dud. 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 Next one we're talking about, though, is that Miss Marvel number 13 second print. This was one uh, I want to say shout out to uh, Blue Green Artifacts. If you're not following Blue Green Artifacts um, on Instagram, uh, you definitely need to. Uh, my man Tony Fix, he's been on our channel. Uh, he was on Tales from the Flip Side. And, and he's a Patreon uh, member. Patreon member, that's right. Longtime Patreon member. So shout out to him. He was talking about this book, and it's funny. It's like he spoke into fruition. He talked about this one, thought it'd be a low print, thought it would be one to keep an eye out for. Sure enough, release day comes, sold out everywhere. So I think this is one that, these late printings, it's funny because some of the more key books were the ones that people paid attention to, the late printings that released today. And then here's one that was maybe lesser of a key and it's the sold, it's probably the scarcest. So that's the, that's the interesting thing with the, the, the level of scarcity that gets involved in these late printings. And with that, that wraps up our variant buzz section. But now we have Jack's long-term play. And for the long-term play this week, it's the book we haven't mentioned yet on this list, but it's a great one. If you're a fan of Chip Zdarsky, this is one you would definitely want to pick up. Either way, we are talking about Stillwater number one. Right. So this, to me, uh, is an example of maybe benefiting from the week. Uh, if you look at the week, uh, I don't usually pick independent books like this. Um, horror is a tougher one to project a movie or a TV series a lot of times. But I got to tell you, this one has everything that lines up. As you, Brian mentioned, you have Chip Zdarsky. So that's the first like major thing this book has going for it. Secondly, uh, it has the fact that it's in a genre that is red hot right now in horror and that is not really synonymous with Chip Zdarsky, which I think plays into the kind of the benefit of the series with at least the intrigue in it. Um, and then third, the fact this is a Skybound release. This isn't just an image release. This is Robert Kirkman's Skybound. We know they've got to deal with Netflix. Um, or excuse me. We know they've got to deal with Amazon. Um, and on top of it, like there seems to be, you think talk about Redneck, uh, you talk about... Uh, um, Manifest Destiny, some of the other uh, Skybound releases, Invincible, there seems to be uh, a higher success rate for Skybound than, say, general uh, uh, image releases. So I think all of that bodes really well for this. Also, the premise seems like a kind of a classic uh, horror story where it's like a town in the middle of nowhere where nobody dies. Uh, you know, it just, it just it giving you that tagline alone. If you're a horror fan, you're like, all right, I'll check that out. So, uh, I, I'm really kind of positive about this one. And I think when you look at a week where like, there's no big first appearance, um, there is no like ever dominant variant or easily accessible underpriced book. I think you have to look at a series like this that has everything going for it from a creator-owned series standpoint. Um, it, it's got a cheap buy-in rate. It'll be available. Every one of you can probably hit your LCS and pick this book up. It's not one that people are going to be sleeping on, uh, being that it was a Skybound release and image number one, and coming from a writer like Chip Zdarsky. And then you look at the history of Chip Zdarsky from Sex Criminals to White Trees. Most all of his number ones end up 
late printing over over cover price. Uh, so for that reason, honestly, I think this is probably one of my least like elaborate pitches to you for a, a long-term play, but I don't think I really need one. And here's the great thing. Brian, we put our money where our mouth is on this one, didn't we? Because we believed in this one so much, we did an exclusive variant. Yes, fantastic exclusive variant by the artist Wando. It's up on simplementscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com, limited to 500 copies, right? That's right, 500 copies, just $14.99. And uh, yeah, we think that's great because they, they only did the cover A for the, the, the main series. So to be able to bring in some awesome, Wando does incredible horror covers for him to bring uh, Wando into the table and, and, and drop this awesome cover that I think we're really proud of. So like you said, make sure you head to simplementscomics.com, the 616comics.com, uh, and pick this up, $14.99, available now. And with that being said, guys, there's the Bolo show for the night. We've gone through that first appearance, Reader Buzz, Variant Buzz. Let us know what books you guys picked up this week, even if they aren't on this list. Let us know, did you guys read Heavy? Let us know, did you guys read Thor? And what you thought about Iron Man number one, if you picked that up. But with that being said, this is Jack and Brian with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. (laughs) 